All right, I did a video previously about how to use couplers, and I said in that video I wasn't going to talk about what's inside of a coupler, how they're constructed, with the theories and everything. I told, I said in that video I wasn't going to talk about that. <laughs> but then people said, well, now you're going to have to talk about it. Um, so I'm going to take one step closer. I'm not going to talk exactly the theory of couplers and everything, but I'm going to show you different types. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what's inside. Previously, I showed you how to use it from the outside. Now I'm going to show you maybe what's inside, and then you could recognize them when you, when you see one. All right? And I kind of waved my hands a bit in the other one. I sort of talked about couplers that look sort of like this, that have a, a resistor and a port on both sides, and they're kind of balanced and everything. Um, but there are other types. There's not just one, one type of couple. Of coupler, and somebody pointed out uh, correctly that the coupler I was using in that video was not a a, a, a transmission line type coupler. Uh, it was a uh, what's called a transformer based coupler. Um, and so I'm going to show you a couple different types today. Um, these three here are kind of the classic transmission line couplers. Um, I showed this one before. Here's a nice big one. I'll see if I can take this one apart. I don't want to take this one apart, but I think I can take this one apart. These, these are basically have the same specs, and so uh, I think I can just take this one apart. Well, this one runs up. I tested this. This was my graph that I put on here. Let me zoom down a bit here. This is my graph that I put on here. When I had the capability, I measured it up to 17 gigahertz, and it's not really acting very well up there. It's kind of a kind of a one to two gigahertz type of uh, type of coupler, kind of in this range here. It looks like it's a 10 dB coupler or something. Anyway, we can open this up and take a look inside. I'm hoping to see that. We will take a look at uh, this amplifier that I have here. Um, and there's a coupler in the output section of this to uh, make sure your SWR is correct. So they, they've built in a coupler here. And so these should all look basically the same. Now there are other couplers that you might see um, that are based off of a particular circuit, and they come in different varieties as well, but basically they're a transformer. They have a wire that goes through a, uh, a toroid, and then the toroid is wound with uh, windings, and so you have a, a one turn going through, and then a multi turn, a multi turn that captures some of the waveform that comes out. Um, and yeah, we'll have to get a, a really a, a real zoom in here. You can it's it's this one's big enough. You can sort of see it already. This is the uh, uh, transformer here. It's a double transformer. It's a balance, so it can look forwards and backwards. And um, and so uh, we'll be taking a look at we'll look at these. And then you might say, oh well, uh, this is nice and small. It certainly is not constructed like this. Well, actually, it is. We'll look inside. But but basically. Uh, this and this have the exact same circuit, it's just that this one's built super, super small. Um, and this one is only one-sided, I think. And then there are kind of other ones that are sort of almost in between. Um, they're m more strip line, or, you know, uh, transmission line type based. Um, but but this this one has a different a different take on that, so we'll we'll take a look at that as well. Okay, and you say oh well those are SWR bridges. Those are called bridges. I'm not quite sure when you can use the word bridge and when you can use use the word coupler. I mean obviously this is a bridge circuit, but it's called a coupler. And uh, uh, Alan uh, W2AW, I'll put a link down below. Watch his video on couplers. It's really really good. And he's talking about this type of coupler. Uh, and so I don't know when you can call it a bridge and when you can call it a coupler, but um, people certainly label these as couplers, and so this is all going to be called couplers, even though it might look like a bridge. All right, to some people, um, like this one, like people are going to say, well, that's not a coupler. Um, all right, uh, let's see, what should we do? What should we do? Let's uh, get out a um, uh, macro lens to see some of these. We don't need a macro lens for this one, so let's go ahead and continue with this one right now. All right, um, I've taken the screws out of this box already. This is a, uh, if people don't know, because they're not into ham radio or whatever, this is a, an SWR uh, and power meter. Um, the, you, you input, output, it comes with this, these two connectors here and the, and the signal goes through. And then you can uh, set the forward power 
and you set that to maximum and then you hit reference and it tells you what percent of that are you seeing now and you can calibrate this thing so you can read in SWR. Okay, so here's ref percent reflected power. So 25% reflected power is, is an SWR of three, 4% of reflected power is an SWR of 1.5, okay? That kind of gives you a nice little chart there on this, on this little guy down here. Can you see that? Yeah. Now that's, kind of, that's kind of fun to know that, you know, it's not as, it, it might be bigger or smaller than you really think, like an SWR of two, which is kind of on the edge of, yeah, SWR of two, yeah, you can get away with that. SWR of three, people kind of say, well, that's bad, right? But SWR of two, uh, many circumstances, I would say, yeah, you could go ahead with that. It's 11% of the power reflected back in. So yeah, just be aware of that. All right, let's take this thing apart so you can see the, oh, see the goodness inside. This is really fun because uh, it's big and it's easy to see. All right, so here's the meter. Here's some other stuff and things like that. Um, it's going to use some detection diodes uh, to capture that. And we can see one of the diodes right here and one of the diodes right there. And they go into this little capacitor. So it's just a rectification type of thing um, where you, you know, are capturing things with the diode and, and storing it on the capacitor, turning it into DC. Um, but here is the coupler. Okay. And it is a piece of these are actually tubes. So it's a, it's a tube down the middle, a copper tube, and uh, that's the connector to connector. So uh, this thing is just a transmission line from input to output. That center tube connects to the center pin here and the center pin here, and it's not electrically connected to anything else, okay? The only thing that else is in there are these parallel wires here, and they're small little tubes as well. And there's one over here, and there's one over there. And um, I'll do a quick video section here of how coupling works. And so I'll do that after I talk about this. I'll ins insert that a uh, little bit there of how this, how this functions. Um, but the interesting thing to see here is it's got two different wires. And what it is is it's got one that couples in that direction and it's got one that couples in that direction. And so on this end, like let's look at that bottom wire there, okay? At this end of the bottom wire is a 50 ohm resistor. And on that end of the wire is the diode and capacitor. And if you look at the other side, it's flipped. Now the resistor's over here and the diode and the capacitor's over here. So one sort of looks at things going that away and one looks at things going that away, okay? And it uses two separate wires to do that. Um, we'll see in the, in the future here, that you can actually do that with one piece of wire if you're clever. Um, and so uh, that's what we can take a look at here. All right, I'm gonna be using my function generator and the oscilloscope. And so we've got some, uh, I got some extra stuff out of, out of the way here. So we've got some uh, signals coming out of the function generator. Um, it's gonna come down here through a 50 ohm resistor uh, that's just to keep it 50 ohms for the for the function generator and then it's going to go through this this wire Okay, so we have a signal. It, it's set to um, One megahertz and so the one megahertz is going to be flowing through this flowing through this wire here. Okay All right now the oscilloscope is Connected to this piece of wire Okay so the input is on one side and the ground is on the other side. So it's just it's just a, a, a piece of wire All right and I'm going to bring the two wires close together. This one's insulated, so they can't touch. All right. And uh, let's see what happens when I get everything in camera here. I'm sorry, the oscilloscope's real small. But if I get it close to the other wire, you can see that we're starting to get a signal there, right? Um, and so there's coupling between the two, right? Um, Let's show you here close up. So as I bring the wire close, it gets big and I take the wire away, it goes away. And so there's this coupling between the two wires. So um, what's happening? Well, uh, you have uh, electric fields and magnetic fields and those magnetic fields set up. The, uh, so there's electric fields going through the wire, there's magnetic fields going around, those magnetic fields couple into this wire and create an electrical field. And those electrical field gets, gets put over there on the oscilloscope, okay? So anyway, there's a uh, hand wavy idea of coupling, all right? 
Now, you may have taken a class where they talk about the right hand rule. If you have a wire and you put your hand cupped around it and you have the, uh, your thumb is where the electrical field is going, this is the magnetic field it wraps around, okay? And that's the right hand rule. And you can see that in Maxwell's equations, but we're not going to go there. Um, but anyway, you can basically see that uh, if we have an a, uh, electrical field, it creates a magne magnetic field around the wire. Sometimes they put like iron filings through a card. And you can see the iron filings create a little ring around the wire. Sometimes you'll see a compass and you'll energize it and the compass will change directions and stuff. Um, but you can see that if we, where'd my other wire go? Here's my other wire. So if we have a magnetic field and we put another, another wire inside that magnetic field, it's also going to generate an electric field, and it's going to be pointing in the same direction, okay? So if things are going this direction, they, they go that way. If they go this direction, they go that way, all right? Okay, let's open this thing up, because I think it'll be nice and big and easy to photograph. So let me see if I can't open this thing up. All right, so these um, <clears throat> end connectors come off, because this is the center pin of the uh, of the female right so this is just a a tube and then the center pin is actually part of the whole construction and if i take the top and the bottom off we can see there's just a a cavity here in the aluminum and here is the coupler so let's zoom in on that so uh this is the transmission line okay so this just goes through right so and it's a nice uh, round cavity this in so it stays a transmission line all the way through but then there's this funny little bit up here where this is little square thing that uh, sticks out and there's one that sticks on this side too and there's a register pin here so I get it in the, in the so it doesn't rotate let me put it back in so it sits in here like this and then uh, <clears throat> it's going to impart its energy into this thing over here, okay? And let's see if I can, I must, he must wiggle out, he must wiggle out right over here. There we go. And he's not coming out on this side. I'm a little bit worried it might be glued in. Might be a little bit worried he's glued in. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to take this apart, let's see. Let's see if I can. Yep. There we go. There we go. All right. So this one is constructed really interestingly. Uh, so there's a parallel conductor that grabs the energy and it's going to conduct it up this way. Now, remember, we, we normally we have a resistor on one end and then the, and then it goes the other way. And that's that resistor is in there so that if things go in this direction, you want to kill it. It goes into the 50 ohms. If you go this direction, you want it to come out. Well, instead of using a 50 ohm resistor, they use ferrite, okay? So this is just like cast ferrite um, all over this thing. And so when the radio waves go this way, they just, they just get killed by all this ferrite material over here. I, I have never seen that before, so that's kind of cool I took this apart. So that's the way this one is constructed. Um, I think that's all self-explanatory. And there's pins everywhere to hold it all in. So yeah, this one, <clears throat> let me show you why I'm having trouble with this particular piece. Uh, there is a hole right here and there's a pin right here. And that's why it was, uh, but that's all to keep it registered, okay? And there's two pins, two pins here, two pins here. Um, one pin is stuck in this piece and one pin is stuck down there. So it all registers when you put it all back together. There we go. There. So that one went in. Now that one went in. <clears throat> Dust out of this thing. I want it nice and clean when I put the two parts back together. There's pins that register this. So yeah, there we go. Well, that was what's inside this one. All right, Let's take a look at some other ones. 
All right, um, we're going to be taking a look at this. This is a uh, amplifier. Uh, here's the big uh, transistor. It goes with 50 watts, something like that. And so it has a low pass filter, which is this, uh, which is this trace right here. That low pass filter comes over here to the here. And here we have a coupler. Okay, so let's take a look at that one. Uh, make sure it's in good focus here. Okay, so this is the main transmission line and it comes out here to uh, other part of the low pass filter and then to the output. But right here is a coupler and so you see that the main path has a parallel wire and this parallel wire here goes over here and it goes into a 50 ohm load. And then on this side it goes into a little transistor which is the measurement device. Uh, this might actually be a diode. Uh, it probably is. So it's probably comes in here, it gets coupled into the diode and capacitor, and then it's off on its merry way to be measured somewhere else in the circuit. So this is what this coupler looks like. So you could make these things in uh, PC boards. Uh, you just have to have a parallel section here and make sure it's impedance matched. This is probably a microstrip, so it's top to bottom, it's inductance uh, matched and everything, um, or uh, uh, resistance matched, right? It has the right 50 ohms all the way through. And uh, yeah, I have this little section right here uh, that is measuring the return loss. So <clears throat> this, this uh, amplifier, this commercial amplifier, um, monitors the amount of power reflected back in. And if that is too large, it shuts itself down. It says, hey, you don't have an antenna attached, or your antenna's gone bad, or your cable's gone bad, or whatever, and it will shut down and protect itself. Um, you can also probably read out what is the return loss at this particular point in time, how much power is coming back into the instrument. Probably that's available in software. Um, but anyway, that's the way this one's built. It's just PC board. All right, so this is the amplifier we were looking over here, which is where the, uh, which is where the coupler is. All right, so we've looked at those and those are all fine and dandy. Um, now we haven't looked at the transformer type. Um, let's take a look at one of those. All right, we're gonna take a look at this. This is the output section for an ICOM radio, I think. It's an ICOM two meter radio. Um, and uh, it has a little device down there that I think is going to help you understand things. So let's get out the lens again and look down in there. All right, uh, so on this one, it's right down here. It's super tiny. Uh, so you can see there's a, 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 a um, silver wire that goes back and forth this direction. And that is the transmission line. Uh, it's gonna go through this little uh, toroid. And then I think you can just see it there. I think the camera will pick that up. You can see there's a little coil of wire there. So there's like maybe five turns and uh, that's kind of a one turn, one to five turn trans transformer, right? Let's zoom down a little farther. I think we can get, I think we can get closer. All right, there we go. I think you can see that a little bit better there. Uh, you can see the uh, wire that goes through that acts as a single turn. And then that real fine little wire is a, a couple turns, maybe five turns around that, uh, around that toroid. And that's our transformer. And that's how we're gonna couple energy out of this one. All right, uh, this is one of those what, AT100 antenna tuners, and it has a little uh, uh, section here that allows you to measure the SWR. And again, it is a single single turn, which goes through, this is a pig nose type, you call them pig nose because there's two, uh, two channels in this thing here. So it's two transformers. This transformer here has a single turn that goes through, and then a bunch of windings, these, the, these windings on the outs, outside. And so that measures the amount of stuff going one direction. And then uh, there's turns and the, and the uh, wire going through the other direction, which can measure things in the other direction. So um, that's how this one is constructed. So you might think just size wise that maybe big things use um, the inductor, you know, transformer type of thing. And small things might use the uh, transmission line type of thing. But what we've seen is, is here's a big thing and it uses the, the kind of the transmission line thing. And um, it's also low frequency. You know, this is, you know, ham radio. This is probably built for the CB radio days, right? So 28 megahertz, you know, 27 megahertz, something like that. So, um, and I think these will operate lower. 
Um, I don't know what this one is spec'd at, Archer SWR. Um, so, um, yeah, it, it's very, very different. Uh, this one uses kind of the transmission line type of thing, although this is kind of kind of a bit different. It had a little section in here that was more a capacitive coupling instead of the magnetic coupling. You always get both. You always get magnetic coupling and, and capacitive coupling. Um, and I'm not sure which is more. Maybe the capacitive coupling is more, but there is uh, the magnetic coupling as well. Um, so, you know, you just take one glance at this little one here and you say, oh, well, that must be one of those strip line type of things. Okay. But if you open it up, Let's zoom down here in it. Um, and this is going to be hard to see, but it actually is uh, double transformers. There's a transformer there, a transformer there, and it's the standard, it's the standard layout. So I'll put this under the microscope so we can see so we can see it better. But yeah, um, it's just a standard way of doing things. It's a single turn um, for the transmission and then and then multiple turns for the sense. And then you lay it out uh, for a, for a coupler. Now th there's there's a little bit of difference between a coupler and a detector. The detectors just add a a, 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 a some way of detecting, so they use a diode. Uh, so um, <clears throat> go back out again. So for things like this, it had the diodes built in. We saw that. Um, for this one, uh, it must have a diode built in. Uh, yeah, here's the diode right here. I know you can't see it, but there's a, there's a little uh, germanium diode right here. Um, and the reason you use germanium is because it has a lower forward voltage, so you can measure lower signals. It doesn't have to overcome as much voltage. Um, but, you know, all of these things can either be, have the t detector already added to it, or it can be a coupler where the detector is off somewhere else, like a spectrum analyzer has, <laughs> is the detector. Um, so these are just 50 ohms in, 50 ohms out, and, uh, and away you go. But uh, yeah, super cute little circuit. The one thing I wanted to mention about this board is the PC board itself. Uh, if you notice, it's kind of a gray color. Let's zoom back down again. It's kind of a gray color. And um, I don't want to go in there and touch it. But if you do, <laughs> you'll, you'll notice that it's, it's slippery. Uh, it feels almost soft and slippery. It feels like you're, you're rubbing your finger on a Teflon pan because it's Teflon. Um, and so the Teflon dielectric is much more repeatable and much better controlled. Uh, it's better for high frequencies. This goes up to two gigahertz. Um, so uh, yeah, you'll see a lot of uh, Teflon boards. Um, you'll also see a lot of Illumina boards. Illumina is a ceramic board. So um, I think the Lumina is the most expensive. The Teflon is, is a step down. And then FR4 and stuff, of course, is the cheap stuff. But you can get Rogers. You can get all kinds of different materials for, uh, for this. But Teflon boards are, are, are really nice. All right. I've showed some different types of couplers. And uh, is that that's the type of couplers you can run across? No, there's other ones as well. Uh, there are ones that use quarter wave sections of transmission lines and match with quarter, quarter wave uh, like squares and circles and stuff. Um, there are other ones that use uh, 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 capacitively coupled. Um, oh, they're kind of strange. They're like a almost like a comb filter thing where they have capacitively coupled, but at a particular frequency. There are ones that are. Uh, constructed in waveguides, and they actually use holes <laughs> to leak some of the energy from one side to the other, and so that's the way they they their coupling mechanism works. Um, yeah, there's just a ton of different ways to do this, but um, some are more common than others. Giving an explanation on the exact way that the coupling works is actually quite mathematically involved and I'm not going to go there. Um, I'll link, I'll link one paper and just so you can get a kind of taste of what type of mathematics is involved in, in looking at maybe a, uh, a parallel transmission line coupling, what type of math is involved and, uh, see if you'd like to, uh, maybe, maybe study that.